The Worshipful Company of Goldsmiths is one of the great 12 livery companies of the City of London. At its headquarters near St Paul's Cathedral, it carries out one of its traditional roles as an assay office, measuring the precious metal content of various items and stamping them with the appropriate hallmarks. Chemistry World visited the company, where the assays office laboratory manager, Chris Wong, showed us some of the techniques they use. He began by explaining the hallmarking process, a tradition that began at Goldsmiths Hall more than 700 years ago. So it's our job to actually uh, uphold the 19th century Hallmarking Act, which states that any article made of precious metal must be tested and hallmarked by law before it's offered for sale in the United Kingdom. And there are different types of techniques that we can use to actually put the mark or apply the mark on the article. We employ the traditional hammer and punch technique whereby you literally strike the, uh, uh, the mark into an item with a hammer and punch which displaces the metal. That's the skill, the most skilled technique. Uh, and then the most up to date is the laser markers where they actually physically cut the mark into the item which is a very defined hallmark uh, either in 2D or 3D. There are three compulsory marks that are stamped onto an item. That's the sponsor's mark or the manufacturer, the person who made it, usually in the form of his initials. Uh, then you've got the assay office mark, which in the case of London is a leopard's head. Um, and then the finest mark, which denotes the minimum fineness of purity. For example, uh, 925 for sterling silver. And then there are voluntary marks that you can apply as well. Um, there are symbols for different metals. For example, a lion for sterling silver. Um, a Athena's head for palladium articles and things like this and you can have a date letter as well so each year's got its own date letter in sequential order uh, 2016 being R. Before the hallmark can be applied the precious metal content of the item must be assured. Goldsmiths uses a range of techniques the oldest of these fire assay or a cupellation is 2000 years old it is a destructive method that involves the separation of the gold and silver from the other metals in the mixture and weighing them to find the percentage in the sample as a whole. The sample containing the precious metal is put into a furnace with lead. All the metals melt together. The molten mixture is then poured out and allowed to cool. The alloy is then broken up into pieces and placed into a sample tray called a cupel. Traditionally, this would have been made of bone ash. Today, cupels are made of magnesium carbonate. These are placed into an oven at 1100 degrees Celsius. At this high temperature, all the metals in the mixture turn to oxides and are absorbed by the cupel. That is, of course, with the exception of gold and silver, which do not turn to oxides due to their low reactivity. The silvery beads seen here on top of the cupel are the mixture of gold and silver that remain. These are pressed into discs, softened by heating, then flattened in a mechanical roller and rolled into a cylinder, increasing the surface area for the next step. After weighing, the rolled bits of metal are placed into nitric acid, which dissolves the silver, leaving just the gold. These can be weighed, and the percentage of gold and silver in the starting material can be calculated. Fire assaying remains an important technique in measuring composition, 
but Goldsmith's company complements it with the use of other high-tech methods of analysis. X-ray fluorescence is a fast and non-destructive technique that shows the amount of each element in a sample. Eleanor, our feature writer, offered her white gold wedding ring as a test piece for analysis. The silver peak is indicative of the white gold. And to Eleanor's relief, the percentage of gold is as it is meant to be. Another technique is inductively coupled plasma optical emission spectroscopy. Although destructive, it requires only a tiny amount of sample and is highly sensitive showing the amount of trace elements in a sample. The spectra obtained by this technique are so rich in information that they can actually be used to put a date on when a piece of work was created. The Goldsmiths Company in London has the added responsibility of assuring the quality of coins produced by the Royal Mint which it does by analysing a random sample by the mint each year. The analysis formed part of a ceremony known as the Trial of the Picks. Uh, well, the Trial of the Picks is uh, it's a, a basically a, a test of the new coinage that's minted by the Royal Mint down in South Wales, and this happens once a year. So they will, they will mint brand new coins that you and I use, five pences, ten pences, etc., and they'd also produce uh, commemorative coins or collector's coins in precious metal alloys. So that would be silver, gold and platinum. And we have to test those. We take a random sample from the, the, the coins they, they mint uh, and we test them for the weight, the composition and the diameter. And they have to be within certain specific tolerances. We will take the random samples that we need for testing the lab. That takes us about two to three months to actually finish the testing. And then in May, there's a, a trial of the PICS verdict, where the, the verdict is read out by the clerk of the Goldsmiths Company, with the chance of the Exchequer in attendance, because he's the one on trial essentially, and we read out that, our findings. The actual specific or the general um, ruling is that the, uh, because it's a traditional um, ceremony, um, it's the Chancellor is on, is on trial, and if any of the coins were to fail based on our assay, then traditionally he would have his head chopped off, but that doesn't happen anymore, unfortunately. <laughs>